Good evening, everyone. Uh, good to be back in this platform. Uh, I welcome each and every one of you who are faithfully watching all these uh, teachings that we bring. Uh, just to let you know that all these teachings and uh, uh, that I'm bringing to you, most of it are coming out from a very painful process. Painful process. I'm not saying this to exalt myself, but I'm telling you the, the journey to, uh, to go against everything that comes against you, to pursue the heart of your father. Sometimes it takes a toll on you, uh, but it comes in a great joy. It's like how a woman um, would give birth uh, in a deep pain, great pain, great pain. And the moment the, child, the moment the mother hears the voice of the baby's cry, uh, all the pain and all the suffering will just disappear. So we are to labor every day, every single day of our life, um, to pursue our heart, pursue our father, pursue that image which he have given to us. Who are we? What? is our purpose in the earth and we need to know i use the word is i say is one purpose we have one purpose and we need to know that one purpose so i hope all of you are well um, uh, and you're coming through this the whole uh, circuit breaker and we're coming almost coming to an end um, so let's get back to the word i there's so much need to be done and sometimes i feel that i don't have enough time uh, to cover all of it but I'm doing according to how God has enabled me and graced me and not forgetting uh, your prayers for me and my team thank you very much so today's title we're going to call, it's a continuation on trigger point to prayer last night we had a zoom meeting in the zoom meeting we touched again on John chapter 15 uh, uh, we read and I quote some things uh, back to you and some of you have given me feedback today on how it benefited you. So let me read that again to set the tone right, to set the atmosphere right. We believe in reading, we use the scriptures to set tone and environment. I am not the one who has the skill to set environment. I'm just a product, an instrument of God. But I still, we need the voice and the word of God to set the tone right. I'm deliberately saying it so that you will have this culture within you. We, do, we can't build atmosphere. We can't. Any ministry we're doing, it must be set according to the word of God. In that way, we are covered. So I, let me read this to you again. It's going to be a repetition, but that's why you get blessed. I am the true vine. Jesus is saying this word, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in in me abide in me is the word that we are abide in me is one of the key process i'm not going to read the whole scripture i just want to set the framework right last night we saw the word i am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser the resourcer the one who resource the template the vine and out of the vine the branches that come out comes forth us and then we further we come down we capture this word abide in me it's a very personal word where some of us have to re-look into it and enjoy enjoy this word and he is saying this word or Jesus is saying the one whom we love and we adore is telling abide in me as parents, we always will tell the children. As pastors and leaders, we will always tell our people. 
listen to what I tell you and stay within that boundary because that boundary that we set will protect you, will keep you safe, will guide you. So in that order, you see this word Jesus is saying, abide in me, abide in me. He's calling us into a journey, into a relationship. To abide in him, then make him our source of life. Abide in me. Make him our source of life. Then here, abide in me and I in you. Abide in me, become the source of life. And then when he comes into us, he becomes the life that we need. He becomes the life that we need. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. The fruit there, the fruit there is most important. That, that is the finished work. The fruit there is speaking about the image of the Father. Unless we abide in Him and He, he in us, we may not produce that product or the fruit, that image of God in the earth. Unless it abide in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. He's repeating it. You are the branches. He who abides in me. Underline all the, all the, every time when you see the word abide, abide. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you cannot do, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire. I'm going to quickly forward to 16. John 15 and verse 16. Let me read from uh, 15 onwards. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. So there is a, he's giving you a reason there. And then you see, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. Here you focus on the word you. You. That you should go and bear fruit. Where did I say the fruit down there? Bearing of fruit, carrying the mark and image of our Father. And that your fruits should remain. That whatever you ask, remember last night we were touching the word whatever. You, the church, ask is a commissioning word. Jesus is commissioning us, giving us the permission giving us the access to ask. The Father in my name, He may give you. So we touch on the word whatever. So if you look at the word what, the deep or the definition of the word what is the word beyond description. Beyond description. So ask whatever beyond description, something that your mind cannot comprehend based on that relationship, based on the scripture that we read from 15, the whole chapter in fact 15, you will see God, Jesus will be conditioning and giving us guidelines. And according to that, he say, ask whatever, ask whatever, the what is beyond description. You cannot ask what according to your limited mind, you need to ask beyond. Asking for the things of God are beyond your Im imagination. Seek, that's why the word, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You, the moment you touch that dimension, you are now going beyond human understanding and human ability. 
So when he say ask, whatever is related to higher things, higher things, unknown thing. I also want to bring to your attention that the word God, when we say we are looking at our Father, He is beyond description. All the names that we have in the Bible, if you put everything together, you still cannot sum up who He is. He is beyond our imagination. It is far too great for our mind to grasp this God. You can't, you, we have limitation. He has got no limits. So when we say, ask whatever, ask for things that even beyond your mind. So ask whatever in my name. My name. So I will go into the word my name again. When Jesus say, ask in my name. So uh, let me read some scriptures again. I'm just recapping. I, I've not even gone into my continuation of the word image. So 2 Chronicles 7.14 if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. The other word that we're going to touch very soon is within the image uh, economy is my face. My face. Okay, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So you see how the word, my name here, if my people who are called by my name. So I've taught you the word, my name, speaking about a particular personality, character, attributes, behavior patterns, principles, culture, all within that. So it is not a name to call. The word name, today we have conceived in our mind, it's something to call someone. To identify someone by a particular title. Now we need to unlearn that. We need to unlearn that. Whenever you see the word name, onoma, means we are speaking about a particular personality, attribute, status, character. So if my people were called by my status, God is saying, by my status, who I am. My name means who I am. So when Pharaoh asking Moses, who sent you? He wanted a name. And he gave one name. And the name was I am. And if you go and study the word I am, your mind will explode. Your mind will explode. So all these are actually one family of words speaking or describing the name of God. So, if my people are called by my status, my name means my status, my persona. Second Chronicles 7, 16, for, for now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name, my personality, my status, who I am, the infinite God we are talking about, my name okay may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually perpetually second chronicles 33 and verse 4 he also built altars in the house of the lord of which the lord had said in jerusalem shall my name be forever in jerusalem what is Jerusalem? City of his peace. Speaking about a son. The word Jerusalem, if you look deep, the one who carried the peace of the Lord, the word peace, the one who having one uh, agreement with the head, one with the head, living, having, a, uh, li having this uh, oneness with the head, become one with the head, become one with the head. A city that will represent his headship, carries his attribute. So he says that in Jerusalem shall my name be forever. So God gave his reputation of his identity of who he is to the one who is living in peace with that only one. We can go on and read there are many scriptures 
to speak to you about me, my name. So my name, so Jesus here not telling his name, the name that everyone is calling him. He's telling that persona, is referring to the father, personality of the father. He's not talking about the name that everyone calls him. So if we say my name, very important, very simple, my name. And we have to find what is, what is his name in the Godhead. So the Godhead consists of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So what is his name in the Godhead? His name is Son. So when he say, ask whatever in my name, in the Godhead his name is Son. So again, the son, the word son here, the meaning or the definition of the word son, the one who have been chosen, called, to represent his maker, his father, the one who bring him forth, the one who bared him, carried him. So the word son means the one who have been chosen to carry the image of the father. So here Jesus is saying, ask Whatever in my name. What's his name in God, the Godhead? Son. So who is a son? The one who have the power or the one who have received the clearance, the authority or chosen one to carry the image, the image of the father, to represent the father in the natural order. In the natural order. So in another word, he's telling, ask in my name. He's telling you must become a son that carry or the carry the mark or the attribute of the heavenly father so it boils down to a point of what the bible does not give us christianity the bible gives us our sonship the word of god gives us our sonship the holy spirit endorses our sonship so how can you come how can you be established in the earth he says the one who come in my name so what's his name son who is the son? The one who carry the image of this unseen God in this seen dimension. Are you there? So remember this. Pick this up. Draw it out. Write again. Keep repeating this. Because if you believe that you are a Christian, then there are high chances for you to backslide. And you will go through all the struggles. But the moment you come to know you are the son of God, you are the only begotten son in Christ Jesus. You are no longer in such a relationship. Your relationship is now in a higher level. There is no such thing as backsliding. If you come to know that you are a son of God. So from this name, so we are moving to the word image. Let me read some uh, scriptures also for you from the New Testament. Very powerful scriptures that uh, have really impacted uh, since the day I started to search. Many of these scriptures were just ordinary word which means nothing to me for my the longest time. It's just religious word. I, I know it's the word of God. I honor it. I fear for it, but I have no relationship with it because I don't know what was what's being told or spoken to me because I was just an orphan. An orphan. That means I do not know my father. But now knowing him as his father, the word of God is unveiling itself brutally to me. It doesn't care where I am, what I am doing. But the word of God just pierced through my heart and redeeming me every single day into his name, becoming a son. So I'm going to read uh, Romans 19, 7, 17, 9, 17. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for the very purpose I have raised you, raised you up, that I may show my power in you through a son, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. See that? We becoming the son, carrying the image of father, is to declare to the world or show to this world this unseen God. That is our most privileged position as a son of God. Revelation 2 and verse 3, and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and I have not become 
weary. You, the church, or the sun, the corporate body, and you have persevered in the midst of all that brutality. You have learned to stand because your eyes are open and you know what to stand for. You have persevered and have patience. One of the key words. As a son in this journey, no, uh, in, in a journey to know our father, we must practice patience. We must learn how to wait. Because in every process of waiting, God is actually building, redeeming, restoring. There is a work going on. And we will never understand. So we need to wait, we must wait. That's how we build our stamina in waiting. So have patience and have labored, it's another word, labored, toiled, labored, worked, never giving up for my name's sake and have not become weary. Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. I know your works, the corporate body, the church. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, my status, my reputation, who I am. You hold on to that. We hold on to that. Because you hold on to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Even going through seeing brutalities, you were not shaken. You were not afraid. You were not dismayed. You stood up to carry my reputation. Now, Father is honoring us. Revelation 3 8. I know your works. See, I've said before you an open door. Now, you must learn how to see. I know your works. See, I have said before you an open door. And no one can shut it. I'm really declaring this to you. There isn't anyone in this world can shut us down. And God has decided to open all the doors for us. And you've got to claim this. Now, we are not claiming it in a religious sense. We have work to do in the earth. The doors that need to be opened is to establish the name of our Father in the earth. For you have little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name, my status, my personality, my principle, who I am. And that's how the word my name is coming. So we are not here looking at Jesus, the person here, but the personality he was carrying as a son. So in Godhead, his name is son. Here Jesus referring himself as the son. He is the prototype son for you and me. And that is why he say you, the church, ask in my name. You got to now become the son by carrying the image of the father. That's the whole point there. Keep dwelling in that. And from there, now we need to look at the word. Uh, when we see my name, my name, my name. So what is so great about the name? It's the image of God. The image of God. So last week we touched on this word. Uh, the image uh, in Hebrew is Salam. Salam. Please go back and listen to my trigger point seven. Listen to it again. Because you've got to understand, because I'm not teaching you to just boost your spirit. I'm teaching you because you're going to become a teacher to many. Some of you are going to become fathers, great fathers, greater than what I'm doing. Greater than all the great, greatest fathers in the earth. Because every season that comes, we are growing. You guys are going to become better than what the patriarchs are doing or fathers are doing. So you need to pick up and write notes and understand, ask questions. Make sure you get the formula. Like mathematics, you've got to get the formula. The moment you get the formula, God will add on to it. God is so faithful. He will expand what you have faithfully learned. So very important. Hear my teachings. Check on your fellow brothers. If anyone is not listening to the teachings properly, give them a good talk and tell them to get back to the Word. Get back to the Word. You need grace, get back to the Word. You need grace, get back to the teachings. 
And we are not giving you a word of encouragement. We are giving you doctrine. Doctrine. And I have to labor to bring you forth that doctrine. So I want you to work your part. So it's Salem. Salem. T-S-E-L-E-M. So last week, uh, uh, on the last teaching, we touched the literal meaning. Uh, Salem consists of three Hebrew letters. Three Hebrew letter. The first letter is Zadi. Zadi. So we unpack the word Zadi last week and I will just go through it again to refresh your mind. Zadi means the word, the image. In Hebrew, the first word Zadi immediately speaks about this. Zadi, the righteous person. Now, but righteous is a word that you and I cannot commonly use. It's not a common word. You and I, we know the word good, but none of us have the understanding or have the ability to grasp what is righteousness. I deliberately challenge you and tell you today, if you think that you do, you must agree that I do not know righteousness. Then the, your hunger will become deepened for you to rise and go out of the way to understand righteousness, His righteousness. So we are studying a series on the righteousness very soon and we will unpack that. This world is void of the righteousness. Christian, Christianity is good but not righteous. Christianity, we all are involved in Christianity. Now as a whole, we need to step out of the good works and to step into the righteous work of Christ Jesus. So Zadi immediately directs us to the word righteous, not a good person. It mentioned righteous. The righteous person is therefore revealed in the letter form of a faithful servant with his arm raised before the Lord in humility. I've explained this. I'm not going to unpack this. Go and refer to trigger point seven. Right? And then... The next, the, uh, let me continue from the, where I left. Um, the righteous one, the righteous one refers to Almighty. Almighty. We are now looking at the name, configuration of the name, the word image of God. It consists of three letters. First word, Zadi, speaking about the righteousness of God, His personality. The righteous one refers to Almighty, who is called the righteous and upright one. Devoid of every conceivable injustice. Now, every time when I'm touching righteousness, it's a heavenly standard, not earthly standard. The earthly standard of righteousness or justice, it is not any closer to the heavenly standard. So if a high court judge have got certain judgment or a way of judgment, a standard, if you compare it with the righteousness of God, it is not nowhere closer. So, am I trying to tell that you need to write off this? No, this is good, but not righteous yet. Righteousness is speaking about the Creator God and His teacher, His stature. So we are now migrating. That's why God has given us eternity. Eternity speaks about we migrating to the greatness of God. He has given us the access to enjoy greatness with Him in His name. So, who is called righteous, upright one, devoid of every conceivable injustice true righteousness can exist only in God only in God so those who are in God can enjoy and experience this righteousness if you are not in God you can never you can do all the best thing you are not righteous yet sadly today it's very difficult to find righteous people sadly so we need to now migrate so true righteousness can exist only in God and is an integral part of Him. Integral part of Him. That's where He gave us the access through Jesus. Jesus gave us the access to be part of this God inside Him. No other being can have an essence so pure that is without deficiency and cannot become further perfected. Further perfected. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 4. He is the rock. 
His work is perfect. I want you to digest it. I want you to enjoy it like eating a very sweet fruit. Now listen to me again. He, our Father, is the rock. I enjoy every word about Him because I've been, I'm tracking Him all these years. I just want Him. I'm not interested in the ministry that I'm building. I'm more interested in Him. So I, I'm sharing this with you with the experience that I'm going through that you also will come. So when he says he's the rock, his work, his work is perfect. Perfect. For all his ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice. Now you cannot see the word injustice in human perspective. We human we really don't know what is justice. We are extremely corrupted. Extremely corrupted with several stars on our shoulder. We are totally, we totally don't have any idea of His justice. I pray that we will learn in these days of His justice. Even I, just because I'm saying this, don't think I'm perfect. I'm absolutely imperfect to talk about all this to you. My mouth needs to be burnt with the fire in order to speak that language. I'm not even qualified. I'm just taking cover, covering under the Holy Spirit mental to speak because my mouth, it's not clean. I'm not perfect. I want to say, I want to let you know the justice and the righteousness of God is far beyond human mind. Righteous and upright is He. How are we going to abide in Him? How is it possible for Him to abide in us? It's a very big question. This God that no one can describe, no one can contain, no mind is great enough to comprehend Him. How are we going to abide in Him? How is He going to abide in us? In closing, I can't just finish this subject here because I want to move to the next letter, Lament. But the first word, Zadi, it's already tearing my spirit right now. I, I'm running, I'm losing words now. I'm feeling heavy in my heart as I'm speaking to you because I, I think I'm touching some, something and it's too heavy for me now. I'm feeling the weight within my spirit. So I want to leave this with you today to continue to read Zadi from the word image. The righteous one refers to the Almighty who is called the righteous one, upright one, devoid of every conceivable injustice. True righteousness can exist only in God. This is where I'm... There's no other way. I want it but I can't get it. We know what we need now, but I can't get it. Because you can't just get it. Something has been allocated only for those sons who carry the name. Who carry the name. True righteousness can exist only in God and in it's an integral part of Him. No other being can have an essence so pure that it is without deficiency and cannot become further perfected. I leave this with you today in trigger point to prayer because we are coming to a point of declaring great things into the earth. The earth is void and null without the touch of heaven. And the only way heaven can be released into the earth is through you and me, those who are carrying the name of our Father. So that we can open our mouth and speak in His righteousness, heaven will not bow down to our goodness. Heaven will unveil itself for the purity, justice, righteousness of our Father, which is found in His image. Salam. Salam. So I bless you. Continue to hear word for word. Open up your spirit. Let this whole month from now, you will, like, you will have a 
spirit encountering month step into the boundary this is not made for men this is made for sons so prepare yourself great prayers are going to be released from your spirit some of you are already going through that shaking and god is already interfering into your hearing and he's shifting shutting other forms of knowledge and is is just intruding to place his information inside you so walk in in the uh, worthy walk worthy of his spirit of his nature continue to share with the rest of them what the lord is doing so i bless you see you in my next topic trigger point i'll continue with uh, uh, zadi until i establish it into you thank you god bless you